good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this week's car boot sale haul video. Two boot sales. I arrived at the first one and as I got out of my car I bumped into Richie, from, Richie from Wales and he said to me I wouldn't bother taking your trolley in if I were you. It's absolutely crap. And I was like, oh dear. Didn't expect it to be great because wet weather, people stay home. However, I'm pleased with what I got from that boot sale. One of my finds was right at the very, very end and they'd only just arrived and started unpacking. So that'd be why Richie didn't see that. Also, I'm not sure what he buys. So perhaps we buy completely different stuff and therefore it all looked like nothing to him, but it was the stuff that I like, maybe. I then heard people talking about Trench Lane and saying that it was on. I didn't expect it to be on today. I'd be, um, they usually don't hold it if it's been wet weather. I heard people talking and saying that it was on, so I was like, okay, I'll go there. But people were saying it was very small there. When I got there, it was very small. But you only need one good find to make it a good day. So, this is the Easter Compton lot. Now, firstly, everything from the blue bag onwards, that side, I got from Steve, and I paid 15 quid for the lot. So, this bit was really my filler bag stuff, and he didn't charge me anything, really, for that. Once he added up the other stuff, he said, oh, you can have the filler bag stuff for nothing, because there isn't a lot in there. So, I got... A Wilton Christmas cake pan. It's got snowflakes and presents and Santas and all sorts of... No, no Santas, I lied about Santas. <laughs> snowflakes, presents, snowmen, angels, stockings, everything but Santa. Santa is not making an appearance. Wilton pans are um, quite nice quality. And because it was an unusual shape, I thought that was worth chucking in. Obviously, it's a little bit early for Christmas, although we will come to that in a minute. There is another mildly humorous Christmas reference coming up for you. Also in my filler bag, a slow down your greedy bastard dog bowl. Um, I've said before on, on on these videos, I used to I used to have one of these for Molly. And Molly now does not need slowing down. She doesn't eat food fast at all. In fact, she barely eats. She's very much only a dried food dog. We put wet food down. She's like, I don't want that. But these bowls are very good if you have a dog that gannets its food and then ends up with indigestion or stomach problems or whatever. So that went in my filler bag. I put these in for sheer novelty value. I didn't realise that one of them is cracked. They're melamine. I realise I weren't showing you. <laughs> They're melamine cups from Marks and Spencers. And the reason we didn't put them was because they were, you know, old style Marks and Spencers. But one of them has a crack. So, in fact, maybe they both have cracks. They both have cracks. They are quite old and vintagey. They'll probably end up back in the charity shop or in the bin. Unless anybody says, I really want those even though they're cracked. I mean, they're melamine and they're not cracked on the inside. So if anybody wants them, let me know. And then last couple of bits in here. It really is not worth calling it a filler bag today. One mould. One little ball of wool for my mother. And one plastic Filofax file. It's not even, it's not a Filofax, Filofax, Filofax. Say it with me, Filofax. It's not branded, it's just a little organiser. So that was all for my filler bag, which is why when Steve saw it, he said, oh, don't bother paying me for that. Because I had already spent 15 quid on this other stuff. So my other stuff is, that's a vintage Scrabble. I won't bother getting out. You can hear that it's a vintage Scrabble and you can hear why I'm not getting out because it's all loose in the box. But I did very quickly count the bits and there were a hundred. So that was unusual. So can you see, there you go. Trust me, that's what that is. Also from Steve. Good night, Mr. Tom on audiobook. This is a very, very good book. It was made into a very good film starring John Thor and, and a small child whose name I cannot remember. And, um, but it's a very, very good book as well. So. Picked up that on audio CD. These two were a pound each. These are kind of like 70s fruit bowls with 70s green felt on the bottom as well. They were a pound each. In you go. They weren't really a pound each because what what Steve did was he went, oh, that would be that pound and that would be, oh, give me 15 for all of it. So although, although they started at a pound each, I probably didn't pay a pound each for them. So as I say, it was all in with me 15 quid. I got this Guinness mug. Big Guinness mug, give me 15 quid, and then all of these DVD. Oh, sorry, there's um, there's a Learn French with Paul Noble that was actually in the filler bag, um, CDs and book, and then DVD box sets. Now, I think I had a little voice of Nick in my ear going, Oh, media. So, the first one that I spotted was the Harry Potter. And that is actually all there this week. You know, I bought one a couple of weeks ago and they had one disc missing. That was all in, that was all complete this week. So that one should go for 15, 16 quid on its own and that'll be my money back. I got the Monty Python movies box set. 
didn't check these to see that. I checked the Harry Potter, but I didn't check these. So two discs in the Holy Grail, one disc in there now for something completely different. Life of Brian, one disc in there. Meaning of Life, one disc in there. So they are complete, I believe. So yeah, Monty Python movies box set. Alan Partridge with Steve Coogan complete, complete collection, and that's sealed. So not necessarily something I would have leapt on to pick up otherwise, but since I was putting stuff in a bag and there was sealed media, I thought that would go in sealed. I know Nick goes, oh, sealed media. The Mighty Boosh, sealed. One to three. The League of Gentlemen, Box of Delights, new and sealed. The Complete Hustle, which used to be worth a lot more than it is now. Um, actually, this is one to six, and I've got a feeling it went up to series eight, so it's not even complete. It was just complete when they made this. That's probably not worth very much at all. And the Thornbirds, which I put in on a whim because I thought perhaps it was worth a lot of money, but actually it's not. So there we go. That is 15 quids worth of stuff from Steve this morning, which I am very pleased with. Fruit bowls might be a tenner each. My Harry Potter set, easily 15 quid. My Scrabble might be a tenner before we go on to the other stuff. So yeah, very pleased with that for 15 quid. Covered in dust. And then I paid 50p each for a Starbucks coffee mug. Sorry, the light's gone, I'll put the light on in a second. And a Motley Mob by Sarah Mercer for Danoon mug with a crazy green coup on it. 50p each for those. One pound for a Port Mirian Myrian Murian Botanic Gardens mug. Let me just put the light on, bear with. I'll be back. I hope that's better. These bras are where a miniature story lies. Story time! These were the first things I looked at this morning and they were in a bag, a big Ikea bag. She had lots of them on the floor and it said two pound each. Nearly all of them are used, but they are lightly used. I think there's one that's still got tags. Although I may not even, I may have imagined that. Maybe I didn't get that one. They're all Marks and Spencer. And like I said, she wanted two pound each for them. They are a small back, large cup, which um, is a bit, 34F, small back, large cup, a little bit more desirable because that's a, a, a slightly more tricky size to find in the shops. 34F, 36F, 36E. This lady's obviously bought all the sizes in the world. She's gone up and down through her sizes. Anyway, there are five of them there. And she had, she had them on two pound each. And I said to her, Meaning to say, would you do three for a fiver? I think I said, would you do three pound for five? Which is not the same thing, obviously. I meant three for a fiver. But I wasn't very awake. And she looked at me a bit kind of like, mm, and then her mum said, four. And I said, four pound for five. And she went, yeah, four. And I, at this point, I'm still thinking that I want to buy... I want to spend five, but I, I basically between our threes and our fours and our fives, we got confused. And I ended up putting five bras in my trolley and giving her four pounds. And then I wandered off and I went off around the boot and I'm thinking to myself, I think I've done her. Because she wanted £2 each originally. I've got four for £5, which means I've paid her £1.25 each. I think I've done her a bit because I meant to kind of get £1.50 each or even or whatever. And after I thought about it a bit more, I realised that what I'd done was instead of her doing three for a fiver, we'd done five bras for four pound and we got off and as i'd as i'd walked away she'd said have a good christmas and then she'd gone what the hell am i on about it's not christmas and so we'd laughed about that so she obviously wasn't awake either and i wandered away and i thought i think I, and after a while i was like i'm not happy with this i think i've i think i've given her a lot less than she actually wanted for them and that's not fair you know i think she's agreed to a deal that she didn't want to agree to because she's got confused and i was confused as well so i went back and i said to her i think i've paid you a lot less than you wanted for these and she looked at me still a bit bemused and i said well, I think I was trying to do three for a five and I ended up doing five for four. And I, anyway, anyway, I've come to give you a couple more quid. And she was very grateful. And she said, do you know, I think it was all that talk of Christmas that confused us. I think it might have been, but have a nice Christmas anyway. <laughs> it's June. For anybody watching this at a later date, it's June. We're not having Christmas just yet. <laughs> so I've ended up giving her six pounds for five bras, which is still a good deal because it would have been 10 pounds at her original price. I'm happy with the deal. She was pleased that I went back and gave her more money. Everybody's a winner. Everybody's happy. Five M&S bras for six pounds. They, I can knock them out probably at maybe eight quid each. So that, that, that's good for me. Good for her. Everybody's happy in the end. All's well that ends well, but it was a complicated bit of time. <laughs> The good thing about putting a pile of bras in a bag is you can put the mugs inside the cups. 
mugs inside the cups. I know what I mean. One pound, or was it two pounds? Two pounds. She wanted three and we settled on two for a latch rug, latch hook kit to make a small rug. All complete in there. It makes a, a rug that looks like a putty cat. Um, no idea. No idea of price on that one. No idea what I could get for it, but can't be bad for two quid. And then this was my deal of the day at Easter Compton because I got all of this and a parasol for the garden for £23, £24, £24. So this is six Wentworth jigsaws. Now, Wentworth jigsaws sell very, very well, but they are few and far between in the charity shops and I hardly ever see them at the boot sales. One of them is sealed and it is um, the Ordnance Survey map of Almondsbury and Gloucestershire. That's a bit niche, but it is sealed, which is nice. I mean, you can tell it's a bit niche by the fact that she hadn't bothered doing it. She'd looked at that and gone, that's not for me. <laughs> so there's that one. And then there is the QE2, which is a smaller one. That's probably 50 pieces, is it? 75 pieces. A 40-piece dartboard. 140-piece Watley Manor. A 75-piece festive dog. And then a 250-piece La Gare Saint-Lazare by Claude Monet. Um, the lovely thing, if you have not seen Wentworth Jigsaws before, they have what they call whimsy pieces. So let me find a couple to show you. They're wooden pieces to start with. They're a wooden cut jigsaw, which is one of the reasons they, are co they cost more, because they're very nice, well-made things. And I'm just putting some of these in the box flat so that you can see the unusual shapes that the pieces are. So that's um, one of the reasons that they're collectible, because they are unusual. I don't know what I can get for each of these. I don't think, that, you know, the massive ones go for loads. But even so, I'm looking at a safe tenner on all of them. Ten, tenner each on all of them, and presumably quite a bit more than a tenner. I've got six. So that, if, even at the very, very low end of conservatism, that would be £60 back for my 24. And there was a garden parasol in my 24 as well. So basically she wanted £4 each on the Wentworths and £6 on the parasol, which would have been a total of £30. And she said, oh, if you buy all the jigsaws, we shut the parasol in for free. Brand new garden parasol, beer garden one, you know, like uh, it's got a, a brand of a beer on the side. I can't even know what it is, some sort of pale ale. But I wanted one for the garden. I had one for the top end of the garden, but I wanted one for the bottom end. I've got two lots of seating in the garden, which makes it sound like a stately home. I realise that. It's only about a 20 foot garden, but I've got a patio with a bench at the front. And then I've got some seats at the back because that's where the sun is. Wanted an umbrella for both ends. <laughs> So, long story short, £24 for all of my Wentworth jigsaws and my patio umbrella, which I'm very pleased with. The only other thing that I bought at Trench Lane, no, at Easter Compton, you might be able to slightly hear in the background. Can you hear piano music? Let me see if I can call her. So, little Lexi is here this weekend. Um, for those who don't know who she is, she is the daughter of Natalie's friend... Um, and so Natalie's like an auntie. There's two girls, there's three girls, and Natalie's like an auntie to them. Only the two oldest girls come because the youngest girl goes to her dad's at weekends instead. Anyway, so the two oldest girls quite often come here at weekends and Natalie spends time with them. She's basically like an auntie to them, which makes me like an honorary grandma in a way. Don't have any grandchildren of my own. Not overly perturbed about that. Got ones I can borrow. Lexi, who is nine, nearly ten, I think, is... Um, learning piano and last week she did her first piano recital which is why I rushed off after last week's video here she is and this morning at the car boot I found this for a pound which is a roll-up keyboard which has been quite happily bashing away all ever since I say bashing but you play quite well don't you so if you have a listen I'll try and get my head out of the way and she'll give you a little recital the ones that I actually played in whatever you want to do whatever you think you're happiest playing Just in case you don't, right, don't know it, it's Michael Finnegan. So there was an old man called Michael Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. The wind came out and blew them in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan, begin again. I think she's brilliant. And I think this was brilliant for a quid, wasn't it? Probably the best pound I've spent this weekend. Are you happy with it? Okay, give the camera a bow. No. No, no bow. 
Isn't she fab? Okay, thank you, Lexi. I appreciate that. Bye. See you in a bit. So yeah, probably the best quid that I spent this weekend because she's chuffed to bits with it. And it means that Anthony wasn't able to go to the site, so he's been able to hear her play as well. She's been down there tinkling away on it ever since, ever since I came home. You still there? <laughs> She's still there, lurking. Just give me two seconds to get my table set up and I'll be back. Okay, so Trench Lane, which as I drew up, it was really, really small, like one and a half rows. Not even one and a half rows. If you count one row as the two sides, it was one and a half sides of the first row. And even as I paid the guy my pound, he went, it's a bit small today. And I said to him, oh, well, you need to find one Ming vase to make it worthwhile. And then I went, no Ming vases, but I'm really pleased with what I bought. Firstly, I bought a longboard. I bought a crane longboard for seven pounds, which I thought I might sell. And then as soon as I got home, Anthony went, oh my God, I've been wanting one of those. So Anthony's going to have that. So that was great seven quid because he's chuffed to bits that he's wanted one for a while. He's been thinking about buying one. If I can get a little bit of footage of him riding it, I'll pop that in for you. But he might not want me to because he's not a massive fan of being a star of YouTube. So if there's no footage here, it's because he doesn't want me to. But yeah, so seven quid for a longboard. He was really pleased with that. And then a lot of my shopping came from one guy. So I bought from this guy, I bought this Hobbit and Lord of the Rings box set. Really, really nice. I've sold this one before. 50p. 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 I mean... Part of me was cross with him for not thinking it was worth more, but I was very pleased to have it for that price. 50p for a Hobbit and Lord of the Rings box set. From that same guy, this Babyliss Pro Ceramic 12-in-1 Styler, um, which uh, has straightening plates, crimping plates, dual barrel for natural looking curls, coated barrel for tighter curls, different barrel for perfectly defined curls, another one for looser curls and waves, a spiral sleeve for corkscrew curls, a brush sleeve for shaping and styling and four professional hair sectioning clips. I don't know if all of those things are in there, but certainly quite a few things are in there. And that was two pound. A pound for all of this wool for my mother. I turn up and she'd go, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I need it anymore. And I'd be like, yeah, but mum, it was a pound. It was a pound. So I pound for all that wool for my mother. I'm just, I'm just gonna basically drown her in wool. She'll be found she'll be found lost to you lost lost to civilization, buried under a, a world of wool. And then six pounds. Six pounds for these two. So he wanted two pounds for the soup maker and he wanted a fiver for the slow cooker. The soup maker I bought to sell, it is a salter one. And as you can see from the inside, I don't think they've used it very much. I think suit makers are one of those things that you tend to buy and then not use very much. I know I sold mine quite quickly after I bought it. But he wanted £2 on that one and he wanted £5 on the slow cooker. Now, the slow cooker's for me. I've been wanting a smaller one. I have a mahoosive one. At one point we had... Um, obviously me, Natalie and Anthony live in here, but we also had my friend Tammy lived here for a year and Anthony's friend Lawrence lived here as well for, for that year. And so there were five of us and money was a bit tight and so I cooked an awful lot more then than I do now and I used to do quite a lot of big things in the slow cooker and so we had a massive slow cooker that would feed all of us and leave portions for leftovers for lunch and stuff well now there's only really me I cook for Natalie doesn't overly love slow cooked food and now she's old enough to decide whether she's going to eat stuff or not I don't force it on her Anthony's not here a lot of the time I cook for me I'm quite happy to have this size where I can have a meal for me, one if for Anthony if he wants it, and a little bit spare for a leftover. But I don't need that mahoosive one that does 5,000 portions. So I've been looking for a smaller one for a while. I've got a tiny one as well that does just me. But that's not always enough for leftovers. So now I have three sizes of cooker. I will be parting with the biggest one. Um, and I've been wanting one for a while. And then a couple of weeks ago, you might remember me saying that Tammy had moved house and a box of her stuff had gone missing. And so she had lost her slow cooking move. So the next one I found went to her. Mine has come along at last. So he wanted a fiver for that and two pound for the suit maker. And he took six pound for the two plus a pound for the wool. So that was all the same guy, all of that stuff. And then two pound for this top from another guy. I will try it on, but green doesn't usually suit me. Green tends to make me look a bit yellow. I'll try it on just just to see if it fits and if it doesn't fit I'll sell it on because it's one of those made in Italy linen linen blend ones so it will sell very nicely even if I don't keep it. £3 for seven Garnier Nutrice, Nutrice, not Nutrice, got my sheaf in, Garnier Nutrice conditioners, seven of those for three quid. 50p 
recipe for an Avon Glimmer Sticks eyeliner. That's for me. It's in Smoky Diamond, apparently. So we start looking. If I look Smoky and Diamond like to you, that'll be the eyeliner that did it. And then this was a bargain, although it's a bit grubby. So it's a Cat Kidston changing bag. It's got the changing mat in there. There's the changing mat. It's got multi pockets. It's got a zip down front so that you can sort of lay the bag out and lay the child on the edge of the bag if you're not if you're in a insalubrious place where you don't want to lay your child on the floor. Like I said, multiple pockets inside. Is that Velcro that bit there or pocket? Oh no, that's that's a stitch pocket. Got something in the pocket. Hair grip, hair grip, and a magnet and a foreign coin. Ten euro cent. There you go. Found some money at last. Oh, and the other side. There's stuff in all the pockets. Bear with. Pencil, loyalty card for jelly bugs, Calpol syringe. I think that might have been an apple core once, but it's not been an apple core for a very, very long time. It needs a wash essentially. It needs to go through the washing machine. And I'm hoping when it goes through the washing machine, dummy, that'll go in the bin. I'll wash my hands in a minute. Not that I'm implying their child was unclean, but you. It does, it needs to go through the washing machine. I'm hoping when it comes through the wash, some of the little marks that are around the zip will come off because I don't think you can see that very well but it has just grubbiness around the zip and whatever I'll put it through the washing machine we'll see what happens the nice thing was that it came with the zipper bag that sits inside this is the one that you can just chuck a couple extras in and grab if you're only popping out so you know you throw the child in its car seat gently and you run to Tesco Express and you pop a couple of extras in the bag while you're there because you know children still need stuff even though you think you've only nipped out and two bottle warmers, bottle, bottled sleeves, bottle. This one, so new, it's still got its plastic on the zip. So I was really pleased with that because when I said to him how much, and he said, I, I was expecting him to say tenner, and he said two quid. So that needs to go through the wash, but I'm really, really chuffed with that. And that's the grubbiness that I wanted to get off on the edge of that pocket there. There's a just a grubby line. That's it. That is the haul and all of the haul. I'm really, really chuffed with what I got, especially since it was two quite small boot sales today. Really pleased. Anthony's really pleased with the longboard. Uh, Lex is delighted with the little piano. Didn't get anything for Nat today, but if she'd answered her phone, I would have done because she, I, I rang her to see if she wanted something. She didn't answer her phone. That's me done. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.